Hello, my name is Alex with HTEC Tutorials, and today we're going to be taking a continuation look at project settings as a local Jira project administrator. So we're going to be focusing on issue types and issue layouts. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that like button, and we're going to be jumping into this content now. All right, so Again, if you haven't already, go make make sure you go check out that other video because we cover details, people, automation, features, connections, and summary. In today's video, in this video, we're going to be focusing on issue types and layouts. Issue types in Jira, what does this mean? What can you do here? And yeah, so anyways, th it, these issue types here on the left, right, we'll just kind of work left to right, are, these are the issue types that are available in this specific project. Now, these schemes can be shared, so that means that a, a Jira project can share the same issue types. Now these uh, stories, bugs, epics, tasks, and subtasks out of the box, they're the exact, they're, they're basically the default, right? Like every single Jira project that's a software type, uh, specifically the Kanban or Scrum, they're gonna have these same issue types. If you go back to uh, my last series where we talked about like configuring your Jira project and talking about the differences in like the templates and stuff, that's where you get some vari variance here. But for the most part, these are gonna be your out of the box agile, software based either Kanban or Scrum. So nothing too exciting here, but this is a great place to kind of come and get a very good overview of what issue types are available in your project and what workflow is assigned to each issue type, right? Because this is a company managed project, each issue type can have its own workflow. Now that is a, a very advanced functionality. <clears throat> well, I don't wanna say very advanced, but it's a more advanced functionality. And we're going to be talking about that in a future series of videos. For now, I kind of just wanted to show you that this is where you come in to get some confirmation. There's actually a second place. We're going to talk about that in our next video that you can also kind of see it in a little bit more detail. But for the most part, this is a great overview of kind of seeing, okay, this is if a common place to come, why you would come and look at this is if your stories and your bugs have like different fields available or different statuses, sorry. If your stories or bugs have different statuses and they're just not aligning, you want to come and see what workflow they're following, right? Because the workflow will will mandate or dictate the statuses that are your, available in your project. So that's this. The field configuration, um, this, this right here is default for every Jira project in your like project, in, in your instance of Jira. This is gonna be all the fields that are available and, and what's required and what's hidden and what's optional, right? And so this right here is gonna warrant its own like series of videos because default field configurations is where probably one of the most confusing parts of, of being a Jira admin or, or doing Jira administration. So I'm gonna break that down into a more structure friendlier video so that you can understand the differences here. But just know that, I don't know, like 90% of, 90, 90, 90 to 95% of all the Jira projects that I work with, they typically have or share the same default configuration. Even if they have different fields and they have different workflows or different custom fields as well, uh, as you can see here, there's a difference between the bug screen and the default screen. The field configuration is like the pool of all the of all the fields, right? And so for the most part, you want the same pool, and then the screens allow you like cherry pick the fields from that pool so and, and apply the ones that you want. But there's specific fields where you're going to want to change your default configuration is when a team wants a field required, but another team doesn't. And so that's where you got to go make different field configurations. But again, most teams kind of operate in like some unison here. So that default field configuration for the most part stays the same. And if not, it's the default, right? It's the anomalies or the outliers are the teams that want customized required fields. In my experience, we're working with hundreds of teams. Most people stay to the defaults. But anyways, that's kind of what these three uh, are here, right? Let me kind of just recap the screen where this is this shows you again, because you're in a company one, um, each store issue type can actually have its own and, and, and this would applies to for the field configuration, right? Each issue type can have its own field configuration, its own screen. So if you want a different fields to show up on different issue types, you can actually do that. And this is where you would see which ones are there. Now, this issue type scheme is really designed to add or subtract issue types. And you do that by clicking on actions and either editing the issue type so that you can pull in new issue types or you can use a different scheme. So if uh, an administrator has already configured a different scheme with a different set of issue types that are already pre-configured, you can actually just go and tap into that and then bring it over to your project. Caveat there is 
any change to that scheme by that other owner, right, will directly impact you. So if you want to marry yourself with them, you can. Or if you just want to kind of copy, you would do edit issue types because at that point you're still divorced, but you can basically copy what they're doing. Now, the edit of, editing of the issue types and using the different scheme does require you to be a site administrator. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it, but I did want to highlight because you're probably wondering, how do I know? So you'll notice that when I clicked on that button, it changed my view over here, right? And so this, this view here is at the global level. And when it's at the global level, you need to have that site administrator. So we'll leave this alone for now. Make sure you're subscribed and you like this video because I'm going to come back and walk you through all of this in a lot more detail in future videos. But again, those are much more advanced topics, a little bit out of scope for this video. This was really designed for your typical project admin. So with that said, let's jump over to issue layouts. So the issue layouts are really interesting. There's a lot of text up here. And so let me paraphrase what this is saying. Okay. And, and, and to paraphrase this, let me actually jump to screens because this is going to show you, give me an illustration that, that really is going to help me drive this point home. So when I expand the screen here, you're going to see create, edit and view. And you're going to see that there's three screens, even though they're exactly the same, you potentially can, if you wanted to, should you choose to right? mission impossible here, should you choose to accept the risk, you can change it so that your create has different fields, your edit has different fields and your view has different fields. Okay. And so those three can be managed independently or they can be managed in sync like they are today or right now. So it's really up to you. But when we go to issue layout, now that you know that those three exist, the issue layout is influencing the view screen. Okay. It's not touching the create screen and it's not touching the edit screen, but it is like, it's like a, a cover over the view screen so that you can manipulate things there. And the issue layout, I don't think I have any issues yet, but essentially what they're doing is when you view an issue, right? When you're in Jira and there's an issue, right? That's in already been created where the fields show up in that screen. This is where you would, you can move stuff around. Right. And so I'm kind of just going to show you what, what those different things are. So I'm going to click on edit layout here. Okay. And this right here shows you a couple of different things with respect to like where the field shows up. So the description fields are going to be your bigger boxes, front and center, your summary and your description, right? These are going to be on the left side of a Jira issue. And that's basically going to be always present, right? Your context fields are going to be on the upper right corner of your Jira issue, right? And these are going to be smaller at the, the pane is like two thirds description and one third of that context field, right? But this upper quadrant here, if you will, if you're looking at a quadrant system, right? You can have your status, your assignee, your reporter, your development and your labels, right? So out of the box, this is how it comes for this software issue type or sorry, software project. Now what's interesting is you get to hide fields, right? And so when you open up a, let's actually just jump into one, right? So let's go to the, let's go to my demonstration here. So kind of help drive this point home. When I create an issue, right? I'm just going to create one real quick test, test. That's all I'm going to fill out. So when I'm opening up an issue, right? This is what I'm talking about. This description, the summary of what shows up on the left, this details is going to be that context fields and these more fields, right? The more fields here, you see that they're hidden, right? These here, are directly related to these hide one empty ones. So what that means is if upon creation, you do not fill out the information or data or provide input to these fields, they're going to be hidden. Now you can change that, right? Cause story points is probably one of the more important ones. If you're in a scrum team where sometimes the story points aren't filled out when you create the issue, which for the most part, maybe they shouldn't, but at some point you are going to fill out the story points, right? Specifically like right before you start your sprint, but some teams have to go hunting for that story points field. So rather than having to go hunt for it, you can move it up front and center. And so you'll notice that right now story points is still hidden, but if I hit save, right? Cause I just moved my story points into the context field and I hit refresh over here and I go back into the issue. You'll notice that my story points are now in that details, right? They used to be in the more fields. They're gone now because I moved them up here. So if you, don't want to see development because maybe you haven't connected to Bitbucket, but you want to see your fixed version and your priority all the time. And maybe you always want to see your, your Epic link, right? So that you know what the name of your Epic is. And maybe your team is tracking hours, right? So you can actually bring all this stuff in, hit save. It does kind of overpopulate again. It's, it's Jared did it because with the intent of, Hey, we want to give you the most minimal amount of information so that you stay laser focused. But if you need that information, that's where you would do it. Right. And again, you're not adding fields. You can actually hide, like completely hide the field. So if you didn't, if you weren't going to do like components at all, you can just hide the components altogether and it'll just like basically disappear. You're not deleting it, right? You're not, you haven't removed it from your view screen. You're just, again, that cover over the view screen, 
um, you, it can, again, it's influenced by this issue layout. So if you wanted to do that, you can save those changes. Again, you the components is going to disappear right now. So the components like the only thing I have down there. And so you'll see it's basically gone, right? So now we have nothing down there and everything's up in the detail. So again, this is really up to you and what you want to do. You can actually pin these, right? So if you wanted to lock these up, that's what this little message here is saying. And so this is just the cleanest version of, well, I guess this is, this is not the cleanest because I've added stuff, but this is intended to make give you a, a clean interface. So that's kind of what the issue layouts does. And it's kind of interesting, right? And, and it's really powerful. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just make sure you hit save. And because if you don't, then it won't take effect, right? And yeah. And so, yeah. So this is the end of this video. We're going to be jumping into workflows, screens, and fields next. So if you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed. We're going to go into a little bit, not so much detail in the next video because again, workflow screens and fields are going to be all site administrator stuff, but I am going to be talking about what you should know as a project admin. If you need help with any of this stuff, I am available for hire. My information is in the description of this video, right? I have a website. You can go find out about my services, trainings. I do configurations. I do custom trainings. I help you out with basically all your Jira needs. So if you need help with any of this, or you're just kind of curious, feel free to reach out to me. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.